Hi folks, welcome back to the series on deep learning in MATLAB. This is the second video. My previous video was pretty long, so I'm going to make this one pretty short. I think I'll keep the sequence that I have one long practical video followed by a shorter, more theoretical video. All right, let's begin. So in this one, we will talk about how data is stored for deep learning in MATLAB. The data that you feed to a network could be images, could be audio sequences, could be patterns or any other quantity. So it's typically stored as tensors. Tensors are just multi-dimensional arrays. And we will talk about that here. Um, in memory, data is always stored sequentially in one large contiguous array. But in a higher level language like um, MATLAB, it's typically stored in a, uh, it typically uses memory as a multi-dimensional array known as tensor. Uh, so this multi-dimensional array will be used to refer to these memory elements or your data. So as an example, let's see how images are stored. So let's first take, take a grayscale image. So let me just say, uh, this is my image. Uh, let me just draw something. So this is my image. An image typically has the height and the width. So these are the two parameters that define an image. So an image is stored as a two dimensional array where the first quantity is the row, the row index and the second quantity is the width. So for example, 0, 0 refers to this point over here. And then 0, 1 would refer to this point. 0, 2, 0, 2 would refer to this point. Now, MATLAB is one indexed. So instead of 0, 0, the first element would be 1, 1. So again, the first element refers to which row we are referring to. So it goes from top to bottom. And the second column, which column. So the second quantity is which column. So this goes on till the maximum height. So if you have an image that is 28 by 28, so this will go from 1, 1, 2, all the way to 28 by 28. Great. So now that's one image. That's tip. And um, I should also mention that each, each pixel, so each entry is called a pixel. So each entry contains a value that represents the color or um, the grayscale nature of the image. So it any it can contain value from anywhere from 0 to 255, 0 being completely dark, and 255 being white, or vice versa, whichever way that it goes. So basically, this is how image is stored. Now, um, what about a colored image? So colored image is of the form RGP. So what that means is, R stands for red, G stands for green, B stands for blue. Typically, colored images are contained in three slices. So every image in memory has these three slices. And they refer to red, blue, and green. These slices are called channels. So the first one is the red channel, second one is the green channel, and the third one is the blue channel. Using red, green, and blue, you can create any color that you want. So that's why you have these three slices. And um, each slice contains the pixel value for red, pixel value for green, pixel value for blue. So a combination of them can create any color that you want. So we have now, instead of having just two dimensions, now we have this added dimension of depth this way. So, um, so this is this added dimension of depth, which is called channels. So a colored image is stored in memory in the format called CHW, where the C stands for channel, H and W um, we discussed before are the height and width. So in this case, our image would have three channels and the maximum of height 28, width 28. Great. And in a similar fashion, say the, um, if I refer to element 1, 1, 1, it refers to the pixel in the red channel uh, having height, having the first uh, height as one and width as one. So the values go from one comma one comma one to all the way to three twenty eight twenty eight. This is how colored images are stored in MATLAB. We can let's see a small example of that. So let me bring MATLAB over here and let me load an image. So let's load one of the stock stock images. Peppers.jp, oh, it's a PNG. 
Oh, I can't type. Great. So if I click on it, you can see the size. So this is the height and width, and the times three refers to the channels. Now the order could be different in some pro programming languages. Channel comes first. In MATLAB, channel comes at the end. So the ordering is not so important. It's just what the numbers refer to is important. I'm going to do one more thing. Uh, let me get rid of this. And I will, uh, OK, so let me clear the screen. Yeah, so what I will do is convert the image. So uh, let me explain. The, the format of the image is uint8, which means it's an 8-bit integer unsigned. So I will just convert it into single format. It's just for convenience. Um, this step is not so important for this particular uh, video, but uh, OK, great. So it's in single format. Great. Now let's go back to what we were discussing. Great. So now we have one image stored as, stored as channel height. With. But whenever you're doing deep learning, you feed data into your network in batches of certain sizes. Now, a batch is a bunch of images. The, the size or the number of images could be 1, 2, 4, 8, 32, or anything. Batch size 1 means it's a single image. And the reason you do that is to um, in, reduce the variance of your computations. We will discuss these in a later video. But um, now, you want to store images in a batch. And the way you would do that, so you would want to have multiples of these RGB images. And the data format for doing that is of, the sim of a similar form, where the first entry is the batch size, and then CHW. So N signifies the number of images in a, images in a batch. C signifies the channel dimensions. H is for height, and W is for width. Great. So this is a four-dimensional tensor that stores image batches. This is a three-dimensional tensor that stores one batch, and this is a two-dimensional two tensor that stores a single channel. So that's basically how images are stored. If you have some other data type, like a non-image data, say you have some, some data type that has a feature size of 10. So Let's say the feature size, let me call that f, is 10. So you will store that data in this 2D tensor or a two dimensional tensor where n again is the batch size and f is the feature length. So this is the manner in which data is stored. We can quickly uh, store an image in this format. So if I go back and I declare a four dimensional tensor called batch. And I store in the image that we just loaded. So I store in A. So now batch is a four dimensional tensor. If I find the size of it, so um, size of batch, I get it's N is one, the height and width, and three is the number of channels. MATLAB has a way of denoting which one. So again, um, I have channel is a separate because channel signifies certain property of uh, it being red or green or blue. So channel is a special dimensions. Height and width are what is known as spatial dimensions. And N is the batch dimension. So in MATLAB, these um, are stored in a separate form. Uh, let me quickly show you what that form is. So here, uh, this is the documentation for DL array. DL array is just a deep learning array format. Again, not so important right now, but um, what is important is that how data is stored. So you define different dimensions and give them give a label to them. So you define what is a spatial dimension, what is a channel dimensions, what is a batch dimension. In our case, since NCHW, the form would be batch, channel, spatial, spatial, because N stands for the batch, C stands for channel, these are spatial dimensions. So the format would be BCSS, 
for this four-dimensional array. For this four-dimensional array, the format would be CSS. And for this two-dimensional, the format would be SS. So this basically covers how data is stored in MATLAB. And this is the general way data is stored in any deep learning framework. In the next video, we'll start playing around with data and especially uh, this quantity or this uh, thing called DLRA. All right, thanks for watching.